So today's makeup look is inspired by Victoria Grayson from the show Revenge. Victoria's makeup look is very sophisticated and done but still glowy and it has a kind of youthful pinkness to it um, that can be hard to wear but the products that I use today and the way I applied them I think really helps to make it wearable and flattering on most skin tones. Um, so I really hope you guys enjoy this look. I am absolutely loving the show Revenge and I don't know why but when I have to pick just one character to do from a show I always pick the bad guy or the bad lady. Um, but yeah I really like Victoria's um, style on the show. Just to go over the fashion and accessories really quickly I'm just wearing some dangly chandelier earrings. These are from Forever 21. Um, they're really really pretty. The detail on them makes them look a lot pricey than they actually are because they have little dangly bits. And then I just did my usual curled hair tutorial hairstyle using my GHD flat iron. You can see on my, my tutorial on that if you are interested. And I center parted it and then just teased the crown a little bit to give me some Victoria Grayson-esque kind of volume. And you can see it's basically just the ends that are mostly curled, um, almost Kate Middleton style actually, which is interesting. Um, and then for a dress, I know Victoria wears a lot of light colors, baby pink, baby blue, white um, throughout most of the first season. Um, towards the end of it, she hands her assistant a whole bunch of bandage dresses and says, no more bandage dresses, which I was very relieved about. Um, I do not find them figure flattering on me at all. They're very hard to wear um, for the average woman, I think. Um, so I opted to wear a bright white sort of tailored dress. Um, let me stand up so you can see it. It is from BCBG. And I really, really like this dress. It is much more figure flattering than any bandage dress ever would be. If you have any other light colors, that would also definitely recreate um, her style as well. Any kind of pastel colors, um, she tends to reach for quite a lot. Without further ado, let's get right into the tutorial. Alright, so to get started, I've already primed my eyelid with my favorite just plain um, priming potion. This is the Urban Decay Shadow Primer Potion in the color Eden, which is a nice sort of yellowy base that evens out any redness or veins on your eyelids. And then I'm going to go in with one of my unexpectedly new favorite eyeshadows. This is a Bare Mineral Loose Eyeshadow in Panache. I usually don't like loose eyeshadows and I'm not a big fan of pink in general. Um, if I open it up without spilling it all over myself, um, you can see it's actually a similar color, sort of in between Max Jest and Max Expensive Pink, um, but there's something about this that makes it a little bit more wearable and flattering on my skin tone. And then I'm just going to pack that all over the eyelid, but not up into the crease. I'm not going to quite bring it into the eye inner eye corner, but pretty far in. Like that. You can see that that pink shade does not make me look tired or red-eyed or anything like that. It's really, really pretty. Next up is another Bare Minerals eyeshadow, of course. Um, this one is Smolder, which is a funny sort of color. Let me see if I can show it to you again. It looks like it's going to be extremely dark, almost a slate gray eggplant color, but actually it's very layerable. So if you start out with a thin layer, it almost just looks like a taupe. And I'm really going to apply only a teeny little amount on the brush of this eyeshadow. It's extremely potent. Um, so I have that on a very fluffy Sonia Kashuk brush. I would actually not recommend a 217 for this. Even that is too precise. You want something a little bit fluffier, even if it's going to be a paddle brush, actually. I would prefer that. Um, so now that that's onto my brush, I'm just going to start working it into the crease. Being careful not to sort of mess up the bright pink that I just put in. So I'm just going to start with the, where the pink ends and try and apply a little bit more towards the outer corner but I can always go back in with some more if you tilt your head back it can help to blend eyeshadow into the crease
see there's a little bit more pigment towards the outer corner but it's very soft looking overall and then I'm gonna go in with my favorite matte highlight color and I used to use vanilla by Mac but this um, Smashbox one is just like a more pigmented version of that that isn't quite as chalky um, but you can see it's it's the same color I'm just gonna go back in with my flat shader brush and use that as a highlight color underneath my brow bone. You don't want to use anything pink with this look because it will just be too much pink. And in the inner eye corner to brighten. And applying a little bit right here towards the end of your eyebrows kind of lifts your eye a little bit. Now, as a liner, I promise this is not just to be a bad pun on um, her name, Victoria Grayson. I'm going to go in with a gray eyeliner. This is my Stila Smudge Stick in the color Triggerfish. They have funny names. Um, and just apply that to my lower lash line. The reason I chose gray, like I said, it wasn't for the bad pun um, necessarily. It's more because gray is just a softer version of black and I didn't want the under eyes to look too harsh, but because Victoria is a very strong, defined character, it felt right to apply some kind of eyeliner there. I really like the way this kind of melts into the lash line. It doesn't look too much. It almost doesn't require any blending at all. Um, and then I'm going to go in with a black eyeliner that gives me some playtime. My Urban Decay eyeliner in the color 0. This is an oldie but a goodie. And it's just a pencil that I've sharpened, like, the life out of, basically. And I'm just going to line my upper lash line with that, but only into the middle, and applying a little bit more liner towards the outside. just go in with your favorite maybe pencil brush or concealer brush if you have one use a little tiny brush this is actually from Maybelline it came with their liquid liner which I don't like but I kept the brush um, and I'm just gonna use that to blend some of that eyeliner up and out if you feel like that black is still a little bit too harsh just go back with some of the smaller color you can just put it on that brush as well and then use that to kind of define the outer V and blend out any remnants of harshness. Right, so you can see I've gone back and I've blended that liner in quite a bit. I even blended the lower lash line in a little bit more. And I've already curled my lashes before I started to do my eyeshadow. That's just the way I like to do it. So I'm going to go in with the remnants of my Tarte Lights Camera Lashes. I recently did a review on this gotten a little bit dry now but it is a good defining and curling mascara so it's the, a good one for this look. You could definitely use some false lashes for this if you want to. I'm pretty sure that um, there are some put on Victoria on the show but for me I wanted this look to be more of a winter sort of natural but done glow um, and so I'm gonna opt out of using any. One of um, Victoria's best features, I think, on the show is her kind of ageless, glowy, perfect skin that doesn't look overly mask-like. Um, for a kind of TV villain, I feel like her skin is really beautiful and luminous. Um, so in keeping with that theme, I used my favorite BB cream on my skin this morning. Um, I just applied it all over and blended it right in. And then just because I was filming a tutorial and because I didn't want my skin to look shiny at all in the T-zone, I actually applied a little bit of my MAC Studio Fix. I use the color C2. Um, and I applied this with quite a light hand. You could definitely just use a translucent powder to set the BB cream. Um, but I just wanted a little bit of extra coverage. And then um, I just used my handy dandy Maybelline Instant Age Rewind um, Concealer. And I'm going to use my favorite glowy pink blush, which is my Pixi 
All Over Magic number two rose radiance. I don't know why I can never remember that. Um, and I'm just gonna use an angled brush to apply that. This one is an SS168 from Sigma. And I'm basically gonna sort of sculpt my cheeks with this, which sounds like a funny thing to do with a light pink blush, but we're not gonna do any contouring um, because I want to kind of preserve that glowy agelessness as much as possible and not create any harsh shadows at all on the face. And just work it outwards. So now that I finished bl blending my blush in, you can see that there actually isn't on any on the center of my face from my pupils inwards. Um, you just want to focus a pink color on the outside because otherwise you'll create a kind of dull pink look, which is younger and not really as elegant as what we are aiming for. And then just because I can and because I like some glowiness, I'm going to go in with my favorite liquid highlighter. This is a sample that I got in a Tarte kit. It's the Tarte Smooth Operator Amazonian Clay Illuminating Serum. I absolutely love this. It has an amazing gel serum-like texture and just enough shimmer without um, being overly frosty. And I'm just going to apply that almost underneath my eyes but really on the tops of my cheekbones and blend it right in but it really doesn't need a lot of blending because it's not too um, cakey or pigmented or frosty at all. So finally I'm just going to go in with a really soft pink lip color. At first I thought of using Max Angel but then I realized I wanted something that was a little bit more moisturizing so instead I'm going to go in with my Revlon lip butter in the color Cotton Candy which is a very light pink but it is not in Nicki Minaj territory. If you wanted to do a brighter light pink you could use also Max Lady Gaga lipstick or anything that is more in the shade range of my nails. This is Essie's Fiji that I applied. Um, I think it's really appropriate for Victoria Grayson look. It's kind of like a frosty, icy pink, um, but on my lips I find that kind of look really, really unflattering, um, so I'm going to skip anything that is overly light and sort of frosty looking or creamy, opaque. Um, this is much more forgiving. It sort of lets this lip butter sort of lets the natural color of my lips shine through. And you can see it has some gold shimmer to it, so it gives you that nice plumped up look. You can see that the lips are nice and moisturized looking and not too lipsticky and not too lip glossy, just somewhere right in the middle, which is why I love the Revlon lip butters um, so much. So there's the completed look. If I back up a little bit, hopefully you can see it better. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Let me know if you watch Revenge 2. It's definitely one of my favorite new shows. I would love to do some looks from the other characters because I think the makeup and style from this show is really flawless and beautiful and glowy. And even though right now it's set in the summer, a lot of the looks can actually look really refreshing for winter because they are very glowy but still sort of done and so right in my sort of favored makeup territory. So I will see you guys in my next video. Thank you so much for watching.